Oh, just a quick follow-up video on um, Dave Jones's blog about ultrasonic delay lines. This is a very similar device to the ones that he had. This is from a um, standard UK colour TV before they went digital. And you can see here we've got the two trans transducers. These are just small piezoelectric elements attached to the edge of this lump of glass. Um, so these basically transmit a sound wave that, that propagates through the glass and to reduce the size um, they basically fold it so the sound sort of comes, starts here, comes along here, goes bounce, 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 down there, across there, up there and then back to this, this element here. Um, if you find a really old TV, um, certainly in the era, era of the, um, the valve colour TVs, you'd actually find a much bigger delay line, um, something that's maybe perhaps four inches long, a, a very substantial block of glass, and they basically just used a one-way delay line, so literally they had a, a transducer at each end with just a single bounce, and this sort of multi-bounce multi design is a, a later development. Um, and as they pointed out, these here are dampers that um, just control the amount of leakage between the, the delay paths. Also, the surface of this is quite rough. And again, that's to stop um, bouncing um, in the surface. Because you want your wave to go sort of down from one end to the other. You don't want it to start bouncing on the surface because that would cause the, the pulse to get smeared. So you'd get like a direct bounce, then you get the slightly delayed version, then you get, get the delayed version that's bouncing even more. So um, the, the surface of that is treated um, to minimise the reflection, so you get just a fairly pure reflection. Um, and these edges are fairly smooth to get a, clear, a sort of clean, clean reflection um, from them. Now because the transducers are very small, the actual bandwidth of the, these devices is fairly narrow and the, 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 they, they're generally tuned to the colour subcarrier frequency, in the case of UK 4.43 MHz. So if we just stick a, um, a signal through it, um, I'll just connect to the signal generator to generate a burst of 4.43 MHz sine wave and you can see the, um, the top trace is the, the signal I'm sending and the bottom trace is the signal that's coming back um, and in fact because we're at the resonant frequency we're actually getting more voltage out of this than we're putting in just purely because of the piezoelectric resonance um, and you see that the delay between these is almost, almost exactly 64 microseconds um, it's saying 64.2 but I think that's probably uh, a measurement error in fact in practice these things are probably very accurate the other thing you can notice, you actually get some secondary bounces, so this is the first signal, but obviously that's also then bouncing back to the transmitter, and we can see a little bit of waveform there, and then again we're getting another bounce here, and if we, yeah, we can actually see there's another one there, so you can see the signal actually take, bouncing around that path, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, but obviously the, um, the signal's quite substantially attenuated on the second bounce uh, but also we're probably not driving this at its optimum um, drive impedance so by controlling the drive impedance you can probably reduce the um, amplitude of that, that um, reflection but as you can see it's you know, whatever signal we're putting in there we're delay it's delaying it so for example if I change the size of that burst you see whatever we put in there we get out obviously if our pulse is too long we're going to start get getting interference between the input and the output so here we're getting sort of the signal still bouncing around when the um, the next one comes in, so that that's sort of not not particularly useful. But but um, so it's quite an interesting little bit of uh, nicely obsolete technology. In TVs, they use these for the colour decoding process. For PAL. Um, the phase of the colour subcarrier is altered on each line to compensate for changes in things like transmission characteristics um, over the air. The phase is altered on alternate lines, so to decode the signal, the decoder needs both the current line and the previous line, and that's what the delay line is used for to reduce those two signals. The other application is in video recorders, um, where they're used for dropout compensation, where they pr um, have a delayed version of the, the line, so if there's a dropout on the tape, it switches the output so that it basically gives you a copy of part of the previous line rather than a black or white glitch to basically disguise any problems with the actual tape although you might be getting quite a significant dropout on the tape a lot of that can actually be hidden by using this delay line to just give a copy of the previous line again as a purely almost like an analog error correction or error concealment type function Another even earlier use for delay lines was as a simple memory device. Um, in the days before semiconductors, various types of delay lines, glass ones and also mercury delay lines were used in early computers and radar uh, to provide um, memory by basically taking a signal and just circulating it through a delay line, through an amplifier to reconstruct it and then back through the delay line. 
Um, so I wondered, well, you know, could we actually do this with one of these TV delay lines? So um, I've just lashed up a really simple crude circuit with a delay line, um, a 74 HCT02. Um, the reason I'm using HCT is it's got a lower input threshold than standard HC, so um, it's easier to make it um, pick up a weaker signal. So all I'm doing is, is basically looping the signal through the delay, delay line, but also injecting a pulse periodically. Um, I'm also um, taking a the pulse and modulating with the 4.43 megahertz um, carrier, so it goes to the delay line with a reasonable amount of gain. Right, so this top trace is the pulse that I'm injecting in, and then this bottom is the output of the delay line. So at the moment we're just getting that single echo. But if I adjust the the bias on the input, which is effectively adjusting the sensitivity, so ideally you'd use a proper amplifier, but this is just a really crude setup. Um, but if I actually adjust the bias to the point where it crosses the input threshold of the HCT, we can actually get multiple echoes circulating through the delay line. If we turn it up too far, we'll get a positive feedback situation where it just oscillates at the carrier frequency. But we are, if we operate just below that, we actually get this pulse echoed for yeah, a couple of milliseconds or so. And of course that you know, single pulse isn't sort of necessarily that useful, but we can send things like data sequences. So we're sending, basically this is um, 250k serial data. Um, and we can actually display, I've connected, connected this output to um, a simple peak detector to turn that basically back into a, a demodulated signal. Um, and we can then turn on serial decode and actually see that so we're, so we're basically sending the letter M and storing that in the delay line if we go into zoom mode so we're storing that single byte for about nearly 3 milliseconds in a 64, millise 64 microsecond delay line so we've created a somewhat volatile rather low capacity memory out of a TV delay line and a couple of HCMOS gates. And if I really crank the board rate up I can actually store a short 4 byte message for about half a millisecond or so. Most of the limitation is actually this peak detector. If you demodulated this properly you might actually be able to get a little bit more performance out of it. Your your fundamental limit is the bandwidth, the um, four megahertz bandwidth of the delay line. So you know you're not going to get more than sort of probably a megabit or so. So that would correspond to sort of maybe 64 bits of information you could store into it in it as, at a pinch.